Hi YouTube, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Top 10 Best Sites starring me, your best, best, oh fuck, bestie who's a bestie, Vivian Frost, coming at you tonight with another Top 10 Best Site list. This time, this one is my personal favorite comic book movies that aren't Marvel or DC, because there's a ton of comic book, book to blah, 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 blah. fuck y'all. There's a ton of comic book movies out there that aren't made by the big two. And some of the best ones, in my opinion. So, that being said, don't forget, like, subscribe, leave me a comment, all that kind of fun shit. And then, this little box, it's weird, because it's dead on Twitch tonight for me, but it's popping on fucking Reddit, on cross-dressing Reddit. So join me over there. Same name. You'll, you'll, fuck. You'll still be, you'll, you'll recognize me, I should say. Anyway, on with this show. Commence le festival. Uh, my number 10, not Marvel or DC comic book movie, 30 Days of Night. Because I'm a show for a vampire movie, especially one that's really got a clever twist to it or hook to it. 30, the titular, titular, 30 Days of Night. It's pretty much up in Alaska, so they get 30 days of day, 30 days of night. So 30 days that the vampires can be out, which is a really really fucking cool premise, period. And it was a comic first. But wanted, to, if I remember correctly, it wanted to be a movie. Or they wanted it to be a movie. They couldn't sell it, so then they did the graphic novel, which became a big hit. And from there, they made the movie. So, that's why the comic exists. <laughs> but nevertheless, it is still a non-Marvel or DC comic book movie, and it can go my fucking countdown. So yeah, number 10. Number nine, one of the best damn movies ever made. Wink, wink. Uh, but Vivian, this isn't a comic movie. Shh, shh, shh. It is. Wikipedia. I didn't know either until I was looking up comic book movies. And I fucking love Time Cop. It's a good time travel movie without getting too heady. There's just a couple of rules for the time travel, and that's it. And then you're just off to the Van Dam and one of his, his second best mullet uh, after Hard Target. Uh, but yeah, Time Cop is a comic book movie and it is in fucking incredible. So, an off, off not mentioned Van Damme classic and a great piece of late 90s cheese. Mid 90s actually, I don't know. Uh, number eight, Hellboy. Not the David Harbour one that came out recently, but the OG Ron Perlman, Guillermo del Toro, Hellboy and the sequel too. Both fucking fantastic. Del Toro, in my eyes, has done no wrong, so I'm a little bit of a shell for him, but nevertheless, Ron Perlman, Selma Blair, uh, fuck, I forgot his name. Oh, well, doesn't matter. He's in the movie. The thin guy that's in everything. Fuck, y'all, I can see his, Doug Jones. Doug fucking Jones. There you go. I work for Doug Jones. Doug Jones. That's a Deep Babies movie reference. If you get it, you get friend points. Um, let's see, that was number eight. Number seven, Atomic Blonde, or Jane Wick, as I assume that's what a lot of people probably, low-hanging fruit, uh, but just as fucking good as any of the John Wicks, in my opinion, and then instead of Keanu, we get the absolutely statuesque, beautiful, incredibly talented Angelina Jolie. I'm just kidding. Shelley Stone. Uh, yeah, but, and then James McAvoy on top of it. And then the whole 80s CD aesthetic. Fucking brilliant, mate. Mwah. Absolutely love the movie. It's based on a... The graphic novel isn't called Atomic Blonde. It's called, like, The Coldest City or something like that. Uh, like a black and white, Walking Dead-esque in terms of the art style comic. I haven't read it, but based on a comic movie, fucking counts. Charlie's is on this list. Number six... If you got Netflix, you can watch this one like right after you get done watching this uh, for the fifth time and leaving comments and saying flattering things about me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Polar with Mads Mikkelsen, Mikkelsen, how can you pronounce his name? Uh, Vanessa Hudgens, was that who it is? Yeah. She's in it. And then I forget her name, but she's from Vikings. She plays a character aptly named Vivian with impeccable fashion sense, which is what made me pay attention to the movie at first, but it's really fucking good. It's bloody. It's like uh, the Clive Owen film Shoot 'em Up. 
it's an over the top action movie like uh, was it the big hit there's another one recently kind of like Alicia Keys in it something I forget the name of it uh, roots uh, Captain Rick I was not born as a woman Anyway, we'll just monitor the situation. Um, Polar on Netflix. You can watch it right now if you got Netflix. Most people fucking got Netflix, right, guys and gals? Uh, my number five, the OG Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film. Not the animated one. The original 1990, 91, something like that. Uh, live action, Corey Feldman as Donatello, Ninja Turtles movie with the real Casey Jones. <laughs> Good night, Greg. Um, but anyway, the Twitch chat. It's kind of a toxic environment, but it's interesting to see what pops up on the old window there. Anyway, uh, yeah, the OG Ninja Turtles movie, still fucking good. It's dark. It's not like, it's really not a kid's movie, and that's why I love it, because it's, it's, it's like just like all the fantasy movies in the 80s. You got it to where it's, it's for kids, but it's dark. And Ninja Turtles, the movie, the OG one, is really fucking dark. Both from a cinematography standpoint and a thematic storytelling story, uh, point. So yeah, there's that. So yeah, and that was number five. Number four, Mr. Men, in my opinion, one of the f not only one of the best superhero movies, but also one of the funniest fucking movies that's ever been made. Ben Stiller, Hank Azaria, Wes Studi, uh, Janine Garofalo, Wolver Hader, Paul Rubens, uh, William H. Macy. It's fucking fantastic. It's better than Justice League. You know, it's better than the first two Avengers movies. Yeah, I fucking said it. Um, it's just really fucking funny. Uh, it's one of those movies, every time you watch it, you kind of pick up a different joke, either something visual, audio, you know, or something in the background, that kind of thing. But if you haven't seen Mystery Men, get in a mindset kind of like I am right now and give it a watch. It's fucking great. I fucking promise. You just got to get into it. And because superhero movies are a dime a fucking dozen now, everybody's fucking into it. So I'm surprised this one, I'm sure it's like a cult movie anyway. Like, they probably have a cult following, I'm sure. But like a big one. I think it's a secret big one. It's a mystery cult. Yeah. Too many of those in town. That was number four. Number three, Kingsman. Uh, now, the first one, most people like that one better. I personally like the second one because of the Elton John fight scene. Spoiler alert. Uh, Jeff Bridges, all the kind of fun stuff they did with in part two. Part one has the church scene, which is one of the greatest action sequences in film history. Uh, but then part two also has an absolute moment that makes me cry every fucking time I watch it uh, in this fucking movie. Uh, but it's just fucking good. Mark Strong is one of the most underrated actors out there. And he's in fucking everything. Everything. He was the only good thing in the Green Lantern movie with uh, Deadpool. That one. The only one they ever made. Uh, number two, Dread. And pay attention to this cover structure, too, for the next one. Imagine turning this one upside down. And you have basically a movie poster you'll see what I mean when you see the, the fucking poster but anyway Dread not the Stallone one though I do love that one it's fucking great but the Carl Urban one from a few years back like probably more than a few years this was one that kind of failed at the box office but again you had the cult following like always defended about how fucking awesome it is because it's stupidly fucking awesome <laughs> shit <laughs> and it looks fucking great god damn it let's get the shit out of me and that's what I fucking hit, and then I panic, like, oh, don't drop the motherfucking mic, or knock the fucking microphone off. I need to steady my nerves. Yeah, but anyway, I even, like, clicked the damn thing off. <laughs> Shit, y'all. God, I'm fucking stoned. too much hair spreading so it just hair gets in my mouth it's fucking like getting soap my mouth wash out with soap 
which needs to happen from time to time anyway. But yeah, the Carl Urban Dread, fucking fantastic. It's basically a sci-fi ripoff of The Raid, Redemption, but it's fucking good, so I'll take it. And the lovely Lena Headley is the villain. Spoiler. And the greatest comic book movie possibly ever made. And I, you know, there's a good argument for it for sure. But definitely the best non-Marvel or DC one would be, of course, if you guessed it, you're really intelligent. The Crow. Uh, an infamous film, a cursed film, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, but it's it's a masterpiece that holds up. It's really fucking good. It's still fucking good. And then all the backstory behind it makes it even fucking better. You know, so it's just... And it's the soundtrack's still one of the best ones that ever come out of a film to this day, in my fucking opinion. So, well, thank you, Fez Billy, on Twitch. Um, but yeah, so my personal pick, literally, this one was pretty... In most of these... Pretty much every one of these videos I've done has never technically been in a tended one order because I always make caveats, but this one pretty much was, yeah, I could see with it. That, this countdown, I can completely justify. Which, I feel like I did a good job in this one. I feel like I'm actually more coherent on this one. I got the right, I got the right chemical levels going on. And that kind of shit. But anyway, so yeah, that's my number, that's my top ten for this week. Ah, God, I did it again. I live in the fucking past uh, this episode god damn it the hairspray is weakening and this wig's fucking old so the hair it's like a fucking brillo pad each hair like a column swinging in front of my face anyway so yeah Share the like and subscribe things popping up any time now. So, bye bye YouTube. See you on the next episode uh, where I'll be doing something equally stupid as I'm doing right now. So, but until then, I will need a sex time. It's your bestie who's the bestie, Vivian Frost, saying, Stay frosty.